G'day guys, we are on our third day after two nights at um, Lake Lonsdale, which has been really enjoyable. We've been taking it very easy, just checking out the very, very local area. And we thought today, because the Grampians are actually spectacular if you've ever been there, um, they are only 20 minutes away from our camp. So that's where we're up to now. I reckon those, like, those kind of bicycles always look like a lot of fun to ride, but I'd be so concerned about riding while on the road. Here we go, so this is the Grampian National Park. We have been to Grampians a number of times, but we haven't uh, been to this track before, have we? Yeah. I honestly can't remember. It's such a long time ago. It must be 10 years. I think since we came to the Grampians and we only did one four wheel drive track and I can't even remember where we drove to so yeah, too long ago I'm afraid. Are you going to get off the road or are you just going to stand there and look like a shag on a rock? Yeah, that's a wallaby by the way, it's not kangaroo. There's an emu there. See and also this baby emu if he's oh, yes. still there. Yeah. Hopefully we can. Hang on, they're gonna cross the road, so you will see the baby emus. River Road that we're sticking to for now. Yeah. And we did just air down, so we put uh, 24 psi in the back, 22 in the front. And the reason we always do a bit more or a bit of extra air pressure in the rear tyres is because we carry a load in the back. We've always got our fridge back there and our recovery gear and our first aid kit and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it's always a bit heavier in the rear, so you need a bit more air in those tyres. And interestingly, you will have heard me speak before about making sure that when you go four-wheel driving, even if you're expecting an easy trip, make sure you take everything with you that you need to at least do one night. And on this occasion, I've made a rookie mistake. I forgot to bring my hoodie with me. So I don't have a warm jacket to put on. But having said that, our first aid kit does have plastic ponchos in there, so if worse comes to worse, at least I've got something to keep the water off and the uh, the wind off. So that's just, uh, again, you can make a mistake, but we already have the benefit of knowing that we have those plastic ponchos as backup. Won't keep me warm, but will keep me dry. The Grampians are a little under three hours drive west of Melbourne. It's a great destination for walking, hiking, camping and four-wheel driving. Or you can just relax and sample some of the local wine and produce. It's worth noting it's only a five and a half hour drive from Adelaide too. So if you're a crow eater, the Grampians is still a good destination for a long weekend. And you don't have to spend a fortune. There are plenty of free sites such as Lake Lonsdale if you're campers like us. We highly recommend the area and certainly suggest you spend at least a couple of days exploring if you can. In terms term of forward driving difficulty, I reckon this is like a, a Rav4 level. Oh mate, you could bring a sedan down here, absolutely no trouble. Yeah. It's, it's obviously been regularly graded and well maintained. There's nothing difficult at all except just make sure you keep your eyes on the road so you don't drive off the edge. Yeah. It appears there are a few wallabies on the road, so we're on the watch for this little jumpers. Yeah, and they've got a surprisingly dark coat as well, so yeah. they don't really pop out, but this bit of <laughs> it is a bit overcast today yeah. as well. I think that Alex, also the uh, the ground is red, it's like in the outback. I will be stopping to take a look at the map again in just a few minutes, so there's another wallaby down the road, there's heaps of them today. So this with wallaby, isn't it, Jay? They, they just like keep running oh, mate, in the middle of the road. Wallabies and roos, we, I mean, they're not stupid, but they're car stupid. And 
it, think... it, it appears to me I've never actually looked up the behaviour, but I've lived in so many areas where kangaroos have been rampant. And if there's one thing I've noticed, they'll jump right in front of your car and start going up the road because I assume because that's the clearest way for them. So it's like going through the bush. They don't know that the, road, the car's going to stay on the road. So they say, oh, this is the clearest way. I'm going to hop this way. And so they just hop along in front of your car, uh, which makes them appear a little bit silly from a road sense perspective, but I'm sure it makes sense to them. Yeah. I think that one was a kangaroo, not a wallaby. Mm. It's a bit bigger and it's a bit more greyer from the back. And that's another good reason for just like taking your time on these roads. We always sort of, even though the road's perfectly reasonable you could do 80 on here if you wanted to and i think the speed limit's 100 but we just toddle along at 40 k's an hour enjoying the scenery enjoying the road and the bonus of that is it gives you plenty of time to react to wildlife yeah uh, strongly advised to keep the speed down oh there's, there's the kangaroo there's four of them over there All right, we're going to turn left here, up uh, Moorah Track. Moorah Track, forward driving, yep. Oh, right. road closed. We are not going up Moorah Track. So is there any other track that we can go? Uh, there are, there's plenty. I was just thinking that would be a nice way to... That, that was going to take us the same way we're going now, but just through a slightly rough up area. But instead... This is Glenet River Road and... And this is, I think it was... Oh. Maintenance vehicles are walkers only. No. Against its clothes. No, going for us. Walk, walkers only, it said. So two of the four-wheel drive tracks that we were going to um, were close. But if, you, if you're a hiker, you can go, but not a vehicle, obviously. Only management vehicles only. So that's the story of four-wheel driving uh, with us. Uh, sometimes that we don't know that the location is actually close until we are there. Is that right, Jay? That is correct. And we, we hadn't actually made a plan uh, to come to the Grampians. It was only when we got to Lake Lonsdale and set ourselves up and had a poke around there that we realised that it's only like 20 minutes <laughs> to Hall's Gap from our camp, which is why we've come down here today. So we hadn't done any research on the roads over here. And as I was saying earlier, it's got to be 10 years since the last time we were here. So, yep, yeah, that's, that's the pitfalls. If you haven't done your research, you might find yourself with closed tracks, but it's still a pleasant drive, and we're seeing the wildlife, so I'm happy. Yeah. Oh, my God, it's open. It is open, ladies and gentlemen and others. <laughs> that's good. So there's an intersection here. You go this close again so we are just going to the other one which i think is only going to show us to the to a lake's edge <laughs> there's probably it's all right. if there's one thing that we've learned over our years of camping and driving in victoria and australia it's this plans change today those changes are small a number of tracks that we found on our map are not currently open to vehicles that's an easy call for us turn around some people will try to find a way around those closed tracks. My advice is just don't do it. Those tracks are closed for a reason. It might be for your safety, it might be to allow for recovery and rehabilitation of the landscape, and if you're driving on a track where a hiker has every right to expect no vehicles, you're courting disaster. It's not about living in a nanny state. It's about making sure that these places stay safely accessible to all of us. We found ourselves at Muramura Reservoir, which wasn't somewhere we were aiming for, but there was a, an unmarked track on the four-wheel drive track we were attempting to go down. Um, so we've headed down here, and it looks more of a wetland than a reservoir, but there's obviously a bit of water coming out of it. Um, so they've got the sluice gate partially open, and it is really quite a nice spot.
we've not been having too much luck with the four-wheel drive tracks so far. They've all been closed. I don't know if this is seasonal closure or what the story is. It'll still take, take us back to the main road. Oh yes, true. It's a bit more of an interesting drive. Here we go. There's something happening down here. Oh, I was just putting it in four high. We were in all-wheel drive up until now. There's a bit of sand here. Now oh, there's a split. Four split. My God. We go straight ahead. Yes. One day. There. Oops, lucky. That's right, we got the chainsaw anyway, just in case. Yeah. Oh, we split again. Well, we'll shoot up. Yeah. It's a bit more like it. Do you know why? At least we can have our lunch at the peak. We have found ourselves a nice spot for eating our lunch. Look at that. Isn't it gorgeous? become very rocky. <laughs> and one particularly steep part. Which goes a bit of a challenge.
Uh, there we go. We had it. That's it. We found ourselves a little track with a little stick bit for a little challenge. And with a bit of bang on there. And another scrape underneath. All That's right. it. We, we won't be going four wheel driving again until two things have happened. One is getting that strap fixed up on the petrol tank, but also two inch lift. We just, otherwise, it's pointless. We'll just yeah. end up doing damage again. We finished for the day. We made it in time because it's raining now outside. It's a good timing. traditional way after doing the whole driving we're having a coffee in a cafe called coffee actually it wouldn't be a camping trip if we didn't go to the closest coffee shop yeah to the caffeine infusion this is actually quite nice i really like it Shoulder as he reached over. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just teasing, he said. <laughs> 